Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We're continuing through the Gospel of John. We're in the 13th chapter. We looked at the first five verses in the last episode. Let's recap those real quick, and we'll keep pressing on. <clears throat> Remember verse 1, it said that it was the Feast of the Passover. It was just before the Feast of the Passover. And the first verse tells us this. When Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And so John is telling us so much about what was happening here. Jesus knew that his time of corporeal existence was coming to an end. He knew that the very reason that he had come was about to come to a point. So in verse 2, told us this. During supper, when the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, verse 3, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from the supper. <clears throat> so we keep learning these things about Jesus. We see that he's already been betrayed. <clears throat> okay? We see that he knows that all things were given into his hands by Father, and he knows that he's come from God, and he knows he's going back to God. He arises from the supper, and he does something. Verse 4 tells us, <clears throat> He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. <clears throat> and so, you know, don't let the, the familiarity of this encounter right here rob us of some truths. Just think about it. If you've ever had your foot rubbed for whatever reason, you know, you know how good that feels. There's some really some amazing things about that. That whole reflexology thing and how our bodies function and things happen, and uh, <clears throat> it's a very uh, 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 intimate, intense type of thing. It's a very humbling kind of thing. It's a very personal type of thing. <clears throat> okay, so Jesus is doing this to the disciples. He's washing their feet. He's wiping their feet, and so apparently he goes <clears throat> from disciple to disciple. Verse six says. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, and Peter asked the question, Lord, do you wash my feet? And so it's like, uh, why are you exactly doing this? What is going on? What's happening? Jesus knew this. Verse 7, Jesus answered him, what I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. And so much of what happened with Jesus and the disciples while he was here on earth <clears throat> uh, can be summoned in that kind of way, right? <clears throat> they didn't understand it at that time, but they would understand it afterwards. And so Jesus explains that to Peter. Well, Peter being the impetuous person that he was, that was just not quite the satisfactory answer. Verse 8, <clears throat> Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. You have no, you have no share with me. You have nothing to do with me. <clears throat> well, Peter, in the way that he was, he would go from the dogmatic stance of one extreme <clears throat> to the dogmatic stance of another extreme. Verse 9, he says, uh, Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And so we understand what was going on, Peter. Peter was sitting there going, there's no way that I'm going to let you wash my feet. I don't deserve that. That was really his attitude. Okay. Because he knew that Jesus was Lord. He knew what was about to happen. Jesus had been saying repeatedly he was about to die. And now Jesus was doing this for them. And he says, "Just no, Lord, you're not going to do this. And Jesus says, if you don't allow me to do this, then you don't have anything to do with me. Well, then Peter says, well, not only my feet, but wash all of me, Lord, and wash all of me. And, you know, just the exuberance of wanting to have everything to do with the Lord, not to withhold anything. <clears throat> and then Jesus says this. Jesus said to him, the one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. Uh oh. You can sort of hear the music going dun 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 dun. You know, we've already been told several times that Jesus knew that there was a traitor in the midst and he had known from the beginning. 
Well, what does this mean right here that Jesus says, well, the one who's bathed doesn't need to be washed except for his feet? I think the picture that he's given us is that when we are saved, when we are washed clean, okay, when we are made anew, we are new creatures, right? We're a new creation. And he says you don't need to be rebathed over and over and over again. You just need to have your feet washed. And I think it's a very vivid picture for us that as we are going through the world, as we're going through the world, we'll pick up the dirt and the grime of the world. And, and where does our body interface with the world? You know, if you're just walking along with your feet. <clears throat> exactly. So he's saying this, just wash away the things that you collect and that you pick up from the world. You have been washed. You are clean. He tells me point blank. And you are clean, but not every one of you. <clears throat> he says, you are clean. You've been saved. You've been transformed. But just wash away the stuff that you pick up as you're walking along through life. It's a great, great principle for us. But again, he says, not every one of you are. Verse 11 tells us this. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, not all of you are clean. Hmm. What do you think of that? You actually see some pictures right here. You know, so often people get bent out of shape because... <clears throat> You know, the repassage in the scripture, it talks about that you'll have the wheat and the tear and that you begin to realize, wait a minute, people that are part of the organizational church are not really saved. <coughs> and quite often they have no inclination, no desire to be saved. And yet they're very religious and they're there and they're problematic and they do all this kind of stuff day in and day out. Uh, we shouldn't be surprised. The Lord had one with him. Okay. He had one in his midst. He'd actually called him, and he knew from the beginning that he was. Now, why did he do that? Because the Father told him to. Why did the Father want him to do that? If for no other reason for a picture for us, <clears throat> for how we're to handle such things, what we're to do. And as we continue going through here, we're going to see that Jesus is given a model and example of walking in humility before one another, not allowing sin to have its day. No, we deal with that. Okay, And you see in other portions of the Scripture <clears throat> that if someone, particularly if they're a true believer, if they're a true believer and they keep sinning and keep doing certain things, then you do some things, okay? You apply what we call church discipline, which you see in Matthew 18 and 1 Corinthians 7 and some other and Titus, other passages. <clears throat> but the whole point of that is that they would be restored back in the right relationship with the Lord. Uh, the one who is not clean is not in the right relationship with the Lord to begin with. And so the attitude is totally different. The attitude there is to continue to present the gospel to them, to continue to present the truth and live the truth before them. And, you know, I, I think that one of the greatest fields of harvest that we have is the local church. Okay? So many within the local church are not truly saved. Okay, They're not truly saved. And I think God wants to do a great thing with that. I think he wants to save a lot of folks. Anyway, thank you so much for being with me again. I'm Dale, and I'll see you again next episode.